the big lecture of these authors, that went from the University of Bonn and others to the book of all the British volumes in the context of the other things. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, also for the, the talks. And Gabriel has asked me to give a little bit of introductory talk, so I will not come so far. There is one topic actually I'm very happy to tell you. <laughs> so, um, so topological string or string three in general is of course about a map from a Riemann surface into a target space. And uh, now, if this M, so if M has a covariant constant spin, Then you have a Suzy. And in particular, we are interested in the case that M is a Calabiao, so it has a, a spin zero form. And so I'm not mostly talking about uh, the three dimensional case. And it has a Kelda form. And in this case, we have um, an extended Suzy. And uh, in space time, we have an N equal to two. We start from uh, type two. And in, in the word sheet, we have a two comma two. Uh, you see, there's a left and right those string situation. And uh, so, so let me add here a little bit. So, um, this one uh, gives rise to a perturbation. Uh, in which the metric is still flat, and, and this gives rise to a perturbation. So these are called Taylor and these are called the complex uh, fraction of the And uh, now the um, the uh, theory is, of course, due to this additional structure, uh, a little bit uh, simpler. Uh, I will call it the fields which uh, are moduli. Uh, I call them phi z, and here I call them uh, sorry phi t, and there might be many t's, and here I call them phi z. So there is a moduli space uh, of complex structure moduli. There is a moduli space of field structure moduli space, and uh, <clears throat> and as we will as we see, the mirror symmetry actually uh, does um, identify these two spaces. But uh, now let me uh, sort of um, uh, um, make uh, make advantage, take advantage of these two structures. So this is a of course this uh, is a SUSE, and then you have um, then you have um, uh, Neil potent operators. But in this case, you can actually uh, define two Neil potent operators. Uh, so you can. So this gives rise to two near potent operators, and this in turn uh, gives rise to uh, a topological, I mean, to a homological, uh, topological theory. And what this means is simply that you, uh, you have a state, let's say it's a physical state, and it would be annihilated by uh, one of these near potent operators. But you uh, identify two states uh, if they are <clears throat> uh, if they are related by something that is too exact. So it's basically that's why it's called homology because it's a homological theory. And uh, and the thing is that. This gives rise, and this is a, a topological A model, and it's written for it. And this is the topological B model. And the, um, the uh, so the, the consequences I will shortly explain. I mean, first, uh, I could also say that on the word sheet, exchanging A and B is pretty trivial. So uh, this is almost. Uh, on this worksheet, and uh, but that leads uh, in the space time interpretation to neural symmetry, which is highly non true. And uh, <clears throat> so that is 
the outline of this story. And of course, now uh, we I want to say something about how this uh, how this uh, reflects on the problem of uh, of constructing the theory. And I start simply with the partition function. Now uh, <clears throat> we have the partition function, and it will depend on some lambda and let's say on the t variables. So this is like the second model. And uh, <clears throat> let me sort of um, make this in two steps. So let's uh, write the partition function of this of type two, or of type, uh, of, uh, yeah, type two maybe. And then uh, everybody knows that uh, this is so to say we have to vary over this uh, map X. And uh, I will also sort of include some units of the freedom without talking too much about them. And we have to work, uh, to uh, take a variation also about the met uh, virtual metric uh, that is uh, encoded here. And then we have an action uh, which uh, depends on all these fields. So it depends on X and this communion partners and H and this communion partners. And also depends on the dilaton. And the dilaton is, of course, uh, very important because uh, the um, this lambda is basically the expectation values of the dilaton that I will really introduce uh, later. So this is the loop counting parameter. And then you know very well that if you go to the critical dimension, uh, and this is in this case that we are talking as 10, then you basically, this gives just the gauge factor because uh, you have uh, so you are sort of left with this um, that better. Um, so if you now make a projection to this topological sector, so projection to sector, then you get a person simplification. And now I'm so have the right to call this topological string partition function. Um, <clears throat> and that one uh, depends on this lambda, and it depends in this A model on the on the phi. And uh, it is basically this integral, uh, which is of course a variational integral of the, the minus height will uh, will uh, sort of um, <clears throat> resolve itself to a sum over integrals, uh, which are labeled by G. And uh, then this map uh, can also land in the homology class in this M. So there will be a sum over beta. And since we are talking about curves, it will be M C M H to M Z. And then I have to introduce some parameters which take care of that. So I introduce uh, a parameter which is essentially e to the um, e. Uh, well, this is a, a, a dual curve in the uh, I mean a dual curve in the Morley cone dual to the Kähler uh, class. And then I integrate this one. And <clears throat> if I this integral doesn't depend on the homology class again, so it, it will basically get something. Like E T B E T. So this is how these parameters and um, I can't you know so this breaks down into this this piece of the and what remains is essentially an integral over the modular space. And uh, you have to take a uh, line Mumford compactification to actually and then the class, which also is constructed uh, according to so what it boils down to is that you have the dual integral, but the integral is only a finite integral because this has actually um, the dimension of that is actually between zero, so that's the dimension. Is something like um, one minus uh, v 
and then uh, dim m minus three, and um, and then the interval over um, uh, c two of the pullback to this curve uh, to the world sheet, and uh, that's that is zero because sorry c one because we are on the color yao, so this is the c one of the band pull it back to the world sheet by its map x and then um, your m is in something which is formally zero um the out three put and um and that in particular means that it all exists if you actually do the calculation you do it a little bit different you uh, go out of the category of complex manifold and go to subtactic manifolds and then this modelized space is actually positive dimensional and then you can do localization uh, to um, torus action, for example. So here, one could say this is a super symmetric localization. Is basically saying that you go Um, so, one should also mention the following. Um, I introduced this um, this uh, deformation. U A of um, of um, uh, let's say X uh, Z. So that is exact. So in other words, this theory. As you see, it doesn't depend on Z, it only depends on, uh, on T. And that is exactly opposite in the B model. So in the B model, you would have that phi T is something like QB uh, XT. So this, so in other words, this model I fields are now uh, exact. And that means in correlation function of the homological topological field theory, they don't appear this model. That's why this only depends on T. While uh, if I would do the, the B model, it would only depend on, uh, on Z. And, uh, and that is, of course, the enormous uh, simplification and is what is uh, here uh, uh, written by mirror symmetry. So So this remark, um, <clears throat> remark is out writing now too much uh, down, uh, tells you that there exists a set top. Now I make, can make the qualifier A and here B, uh, but it's also clear from the fact that it only depends on Z. And, uh, and then uh, uh, this is, um, uh, there's a sort of say, it's, um, is um, the is the z let's say this is the topological string partition function uh, for uh, a w and of course this w because this is mirror uh, mirror uh, to uh, m so <clears throat> so then uh, I don't go into details here but uh, anyway there exists such uh, such a thing uh, as a uh, uh, Strominger Saslo Yao, this torus vibration, or by or more down to earth by this butter construct using the flex. So, um, now having said that, uh, they, uh, you ask here uh, this was the contribution of the holomorphic maps. So, here, uh, this contribution, this contribution. Uh, is uh, due to the constant map. And you can almost guess that. Uh, however, uh, with a complicated measure,
uh, depending on omega, on this big omega. And it turns out that this then leads to the periods uh, of, uh, I mean, it's all expressed in terms of the periods of W. And, um, and uh, it's, um, so to say, uh, much easier, <laughs> one can say, or let's say, let's say in a brace. Uh, the B model always wins. In terms of calculation. <clears throat> so, um, so let me sort of um, <clears throat> make a couple of remarks here that uh, maybe are useful. So the first thing is in the in the in the, in the second part of the talk, I want to use uh, this series, perturbative series, to make um, fun series and make Borel information. So I must be able to calculate these things really well. And this is one thing that, for instance, is um, Sergey, we have made some progress and so on. So it's really, it's really also about calculating this stuff. So <clears throat> calculations. So <clears throat> let's start with the A model which is difficult in calculation, but simpler in terms of interpretation. So the A model, you would say, okay, there are basically, let's, uh, let's suppose uh, we have our manifold M is something like a section of the uh, anti-canonic uh, bundle of uh, an almost final variety. So here P is a Let's say kind of variety for simplicity. So you can think of the kind of variety to be before and uh, this uh, to be the quintic. So the, the, the section to be the quintic. So, so then the P is the quintic. And since it's positive, it always has moduli and so on. So that's, that's one situation. And that leads uh, to a, a global color or to the compact. Color. Some people say global local. Or you can do an, a little bit different trick. You take the total space of, um, of O minus KP uh, over P. And that is, uh, <clears throat> this gives a local color out because it has this line bound direction. So again, this is the uh, final, and this gives a uh, non color. <laughs> so these are basically the two, uh, two, two, uh, uh, two sections. And, and uh, by uh, when you uh, use the adjunction formula for the churn classes, you see both of them are, uh, have C1 equal uh, zero. And so it is. Yeah, this will, this uh, important condition is fulfilled, which is actually equivalent to the existence of the unique this, uh, in zero, because this is a trivial section of the canonical one, it's the negative one. So that's <clears throat> the story, and that's now in addition say that uh, p is toric. Then this means uh, we have a c. Let's say D, if this is a D-dimensional manifold, a uh, uh, star action, action on, uh, on uh, my M. And that implies, so then sometimes uh, you can take again a pullback of this action to this modularized space MGM, uh, C star uh, D uh, on on MGN. And then you can do the thing by localization with respect to this torus action. So there are two localization steps. This is the supersymmetric localization, which basically tells you to focus on holomorphic or biholomorphic maps. And then there is this, uh, is this uh, torus localization. And in fact, uh, this works for compact color Biao to G equals zero. And this was uh, from Savage given time. Yeah. 
And then uh, for the non-compact, uh, it actually works uh, for G arbitrary. So this uh, was done actually by the Sasko. And so this this is uh, this is worked exactly the same way with the Athea bot model. Like the formula you get a stack, and the fact that this is a stack also leads to the unpleasant fact that this is actually a cube. It's not a it's not an integer because you have this awkward action, and then you get uh, you get elements with the cube. So. Um, so then. One should also mention that, and that uh, sort of say gives a lot of interest and credibility. And the subject is that there are also large end techniques to do the thing, and and we in a sense also use that fact. Um, and the large end technique is imagine I would say M is a point, then this would have been just only gravity. And everything would be uh, uh, given uh, due to the inside of Witten and Konsevich due to uh, by a matrix. And uh, that is, so to say, the simplest incarnation of gauge theory gravity duality in that the matrix model is the gauge theory the 2D, uh, 2D gravity is uh, the <coughs> gravity. So then there are certain uh, large N. Uh, I mean, there's localization for the, uh, for the uh, calculation. We can say, okay, we have a localization. And B, we have the large N techniques. So let's suppose uh, M is a point. And this whole theory points down to uh, 2D gravity. And it was observed by uh, Witten and again Konsevich that this is, is, a, is a matrix model. Uh, and, uh, and so to say, this. Um, this is, uh, this is the interesting side. This is the problem. So. But there is another um, another thing is um, let's say M is a T star of a three manifold S. Well, 2D gravity is the problem uh, just in calculating uh, classes over MGN without beta. So basically, if you have MGN, you have marked points, maybe. And then you make a, a compactification and you want to integrate, for instance, over MGN uh, the so called phi classes. And there are also the lambda classes. So there are things in the Hodge bundle and, and all these intersection numbers. Uh, basically form uh, what is uh, is a correlation function of the gravity and they are calculated by this matrix model okay. so that's uh, this is an area function matrix model and, uh, and this um, this uh, this calculates this, this section. so it's basically uh, about one can say in one word about intersecting numbers on MGN, and this of course has a positive dimension. You have 3G and uh, 3G minus 3 uh, plus N, and you can uh, do integrations over that. And this uh, you have to pull certain classes down, and you get this concept. And in the localization, actually, it always uh, uh, goes in because if you, if you have a graph and you have a toric variety, then basically the genus part maps into a point. And what is not mapping to a point maps to P1. And this is locally, lo I mean, this is sort of say uh, uh, due to this torus action. And then uh, at this point, you use it in extensively this uh, theory of So it's, it's, it's built out 
out of these uh, two ingredients. Is this answering the question? I mean, just imagine we map all the world sheet to a point. What are the invariants? Yeah, that's hidden behind the um but if you go down like where you wrote. Um so so MGN. So in the formula for the topological invariant margin function, yeah, I should have said beta. beta. Yes, beta. beta. Okay. Yeah. So it's regardless of what beta, um as long as J depends on beta. Okay. So for instance, if this maps with a with a one covering to this, I mean, this is the toy diagram for P2. If it maps with one covering, then it is one. If it maps with two covering, or it maps with two, two covariates, these are all the same classes. And this gives the beta. Sorry, it, it, this sentence thing was a bit fast for me. So you take the pullback of the star action on the Dane Mumford compactification yes. of the modular space, and then what is that? what does that tell me? Well, the thing is, now you have a, a localization on the model life space. You have a C star action on the model life space. And of course, you can imagine, okay, what is this model life space made of? This model life space is made of deformation. And these deformations uh, will tell you how far you go away from, uh, from uh, certain curves. And, uh, and the C star action acts on that. And therefore, it also acts on the model life space. And then if you... Uh, uh, here, if you apply an Athea bot, then you get you get an answer for this integral that we had uh, in this uh, generating. So here, in the compact case, uh, sorry, what did conservation given to? Well, the point is here there is no virtual fundamental class. This would be one of these polyforms that um, okay. that Jerome was mentioning, but you cannot construct this guy. Uh, uh, in the in the case of genus greater than one, okay, uh, the compact case. So it's, it's a technical issue. Okay, uh, by the way. Thank you. Where does M arise? M. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a longer story. I mean, basically, it's the it's the rank of this matrix. No, no, I mean, this is, this is sort of say, this is, this is done without any localization. Uh, and this um, is just, it's just a reformulation on the intersection theory. I mean, you, this, this works over the KDB hierarchy and the world law constraints. And then people found that you can write a matrix conservative power. And then you cannot extract it directly. There's a picture there, this uh, 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 Jenkins Strabel differential, which do actually uh, parameterize the modelized space of this curve. So it is, of course, an idea. So it, it doesn't come out of the blue, but I'm not going into this. Yeah. One, uh, one over n squared corresponds to lambda. Uh, uh, sorry, yes, sir. Uh, is correct. So, so the, the expansion will start with uh, yeah the one over n expansion is is the expansion as it's represented. Only that it starts in genus zero is positive. <laughs> yeah, so that is that is this thing. And then there is the other idea. Uh, so again, here here is uh, is uh, is this famous paper of written on Chern Simon theory and open string theory? And it says that this is basically Chern Simon theory on uh, S, the three manifold. And then if you if you mock this, so if you put here links, so links on S, uh, this corresponds to a special Lagrangian that ending on this link. In this geometry, and that sort of say leads to this uh, vertex, this topological vertex. I mean, plus localization, plus localization. That leads to the uh, topological vertex. But I should also say we don't know uh, how this could, how to do this in common.
But I wanted to uh, stress maybe that in this calculation, you get, uh, you get, uh, first of all, what is the, why is this conceptually interesting? So there, there's two things. Um, first of all, you can uh, convert this, so let's, um, well, I mean, Oh, I'm sorry. Well, in the design, level is no with the level. Uh, yes. No, n is the n is uh, is s u n transcendent. Oh, design. Yes. Design. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so um. So yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there's one remark we had this, uh, this quantity m g n or m v beta, uh, and then a c zero. Um, um, beta, and that was in U, but let's call this, uh, let's call this N, uh, let's call this R, uh, G, uh, beta. So this is in Q, but people observed that by this multi-covering formula, the first was by Hapsky, by the Noisen, later was many by Andrea Pende, uh, you can get to BPS invariant, uh, and that will uh, in, uh, I mean, you first do an index and a set, but you can also get individual VPS invariants or index in that, but maybe even, even individual in, uh, in N. And and uh, that that uh, that makes here a big integer structure, which is quite interesting. So there is an integer structure. And I want to compare this for you. It's a, a very very simple um, to the. Uh, so this is this is um, this is a remark to the uh, yeah, integer structure. And uh, and the other remark is maybe uh, maybe the the, the tech, technical uh, technical uh, we get the sum of all in uh, in the localization and in the lab end. So this is, for instance, you can think of uh, maybe uh, Degrasov's formula is all about uh, partitions. It's here the same. And it's restricted partitions. <clears throat> I'm over restricted. <clears throat> so now I'm coming to the B model. Um, restricted means that you have uh, Basically, you uh, you you maybe uh, say you don't allow all all uh, all. Uh, I mean, you take a, a cutoff on the numbers on the, on the multiplicity or anything. So these are crystal or Yeah, this is basically becomes a crystal of a P four, and then you uh, you get this, uh, this reformulation of the vertex by Shelley and Barclay. <coughs> Okay, so uh, so uh, uh, so then uh, let me say a little bit about the B model technique. So I talked about A model technique. So I, I said this very rapidly, and the B model techniques will be uh, expanded more. But let me so sort of say uh, give you some very rough idea. So of course um, we have um, here. It depends all of, uh, so it depends on. The global structure, global structure of, uh, of M uh, complex structure where this uh, pi is current, uh, where Z, uh, so it's current by Z. Z. Uh, and well, I mean, this is also a nice modelized space. You have also compactify it. Uh, but um, but mainly uh, so in particular the monodromy uh, monodromies. So the monodromies uh, of course they pose a Riemann-Hilbert problem, and then 
so they pose a Riemann Hilbert problem, and then you get a differential equation, you get what is called Peter Hook differential. And in a way, this mirror map uh, T is 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 a is a diff, is a is a quotient of two solutions. So let's call it a solution x not x one, and then it's a, it's a ratio of x not x x one. And of course, you know that it's actually the same for an elliptic curve. We call this guy out the ratio. And now I can explain a little bit. Uh, why the integer structure come in. Uh, also here, <clears throat> so and, and you should also say this is at, at the cusps. So it's not everywhere. The, so basically one advantage of the B model, it knows the things away from the cusp. Uh, so the cusp would be the point of maximum unit for the model, but it knows uh, it knows it also away from the cusp the, the B model. That actually is uh, maybe its power. That's the reason why it is. Okay. <laughs> so, so I want to give you an uh, example where this integer structure comes from. So I'm not dwelling on this example. I mean, obviously. So, uh, so let's uh, consider. Uh, Teta three. This is just the Jacobi Teta form, uh, uh, and uh, and it's of weight one. So k is one is the weight because I take the square. And now I want to make um, <clears throat> the out module. Let me maybe I, I use every character. Let's call it the lambda. Uh, so this is something like. Uh, eta to the tau to the 24, and then eta to the tau r, and eta to the 2 tau. And here you have to put now uh, an exponent so that they add up to 24. Or maybe this is a, um, yeah, this is correct. So it's 86 feet. So this is the help module. Module of Gamma n. So this is the uh, matrices in SL2Z whose entries A and D are actually nil modules. So this is a congruent subgroup. You can easily find the index and so on. <laughs> so then uh, you can you can write this now <laughs> as a function of lambda. And if you write it as a function of lambda and you make a nice observation, namely it is like uh, a, a hypergeometric function. Yes. No, this would be gamma not n. So I'm talking about gamma n. Oh, n, value n. n is is basically oh yeah, so it's n is two. <laughs> but it has I mean it would be if the level structure would be related to gamma not n. <clears throat> anyway, so so now you take this one and you sum it from zero to infinity. And this is, uh, of course, if you know, this is F12, one, one half, one half, one lambda. So it's a second order, second order uh, differential equation. Um, it's hypergeometric. And, uh, and, and now comes the point it is the pickup books. Of the famous Lagrange curve, where you see this lambda appears naturally, it has no monodromy, so that is the output. And and so that is how 
Here we have an uh, integer expansion, and that's how the integer expansion comes into this game by the monodromies that you have on the on your on your Calabiao. And and isn't to say a theorem? I mean, you can. Uh, it's a nice uh, it's a nice exercise in the book of Tagir. In one, two, three of modular forms. Um, if you we have um, a weight um, k modular form, no, no, I mean, this can be meromorphic, can be anything, um, then. Um, let's call this uh, this guy. Uh, let's call this um, uh, f of k. Then <clears throat> f of k uh, as a function of the Hauk module, which I call the f because it's the most famous Hauk module, uh, is actually fulfilling fulfills um, uh, k plus two uh, one order pgf. And this is just a nice example of that. And uh, and another example which shows you that you don't have even to care whether it's monomorphic or it's a, a gross condition. Uh, you can say that um, uh, the fourth root of E4, because this has a has a bad behavior, uh, but it, this is actually uh, F2116. One twelve five twelve uh, one of j. So it's an other example. Obviously, weight one, way bad guy, but still it will be. So, so the moral of this uh, story is that um, we don't have the theory of modular forms on the Calabiao, but we have to pick up books of it, and that will reconstruct us everything basically uh, of this. I mean, everything in terms of of giving explicit. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't give, uh, give us the structure. I mean, there's a deep series. But then we, uh, for the fun of it, um, I mean, what, what what I sort of what we uh, rec uh, discover more and more is that the Calabiao are in every respect natural generalization of elliptic curves. And I give you two. I give you two. Maybe flashy uh, examples. So that's <clears throat> the fourth root of e four is e one is the same Is the fourth root of e four is e one? No, it's more complicated. It's, it's just it's just what it is. I mean, you cannot write it as a model uh, as a. I mean, this this guy has a has a branch cut, into it, yeah. and then it has no nice behavior at the top. And and E one anyway doesn't exist to exist. You can write E one. Right? Well, you can write not what you're from. Yeah, it's not the model. And so it's. I mean, it has the, the only thing that we need for this proof is the transformation. Of that it has. Even so, it has its equivalent. So the theorem is is you can take any meromorphic or whatever uh, uh, guy of this modular forms and it will actually fulfill such. And of course, it's good that it does uh, has a branch cut because you know the periods of monotron. If it wouldn't have branch cuts, or it wouldn't be a vector value modular form, it would not work at the end, right? Like it's the Jacobian of this curve, and then get it out. Like the yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so one uh, maybe lesson is so there's a lesson here. Which I already put in this one up at the end. But that uh, is that Calabiao endpoints are a natural generalization of the curve. Many of you. And I think what we uh, maybe here and we have uh, here a little bit. So let's let's talk. About it. Every question that you know in the elliptic curve and you want to ask about the Calabiao elliptic curve. So basically, 
So uh, one question is, let's say, what are the point of complex multiplication? So here you have the elliptic curve, here you have the um, So, so who had some uh, suggestion here for me, everybody? Yeah, for Calabria. Well, what happens in the point of complex modification is that the Galois group splits, and that is happening at the drug point. So if you can say Galois group splits. And kind of the representations. Let's. Then we had a bird swimmer to die. What is the analog of the Calabria? Bird swimmer to die, what would be the analog of the Calabria? Well, you find it out, but uh, but many things were already found out by Bayesian. So, obviously, a rich topic, uh, but I have another uh, uh, maybe surprising thing is, is time. <laughs> I like it because I, I know uh, what they do. It's the complete scaping of E. Yeah. We're going to have to go in the field. Yeah, that's true. We don't have to get free. Yeah, that's right. So that. Then you can only do uh, the, the, I mean, the Galois group splits only when it's on the top. So. Yeah. So, but that means that your color has to be relatively fine. No, no. There are attractive points. Candela uh, found attractive points, which are uh, the one parameter model. We found more Okay, Feynman graphs. So it's uh, if you do one loop, you get rational function. <clears throat> if you do two loop, you get elliptic functions. Well, guess what you do if you do three loop, you get two loop. So it's very easy. Uh, so uh, n loop. Uh, so these are basically uh, elliptic functions. And these are uh, these are periods. Yeah, uh, it's actually n minus one fold, and then you need extensions of this as well. a non non linear and non sorry non inhomogeneous extension as one, so but it works very very nice, and. Um, <clears throat> And the so now I come. So let's go back. So you were saying about the stuff, what functions you get out of the environment. Yes. Yes. I mean, this depends. You can also use the Bycroft representation, or you can use. I mean, many representations are better than the Feynman than the than the Feynman. So I'm sitting in the I usually think of one loop as being polylogs. Yeah, the extension. The I polylogs are then extension of this Russian. Here you get also elliptic polylogs. polylogs. Yeah, and then you get more and more extension. Yeah, but it's a very rough statement. I should not uh, maybe. Put it in this reality, but uh, but uh, the so to say the transcendentality of the function that you need to do a fine actually does uh, come from a Calabria's report uh, in many examples. I mean, I should put and that's my ignorance. So the point of complex multiplication means, means that the multiplication affects the rational graph. Basically, it, yeah, it has an additional symmetry, the elliptic curve. And it means that uh, due to the symmetry, uh, the Galois representation is not acting on H1. Uh, so it doesn't act. Uh, so to say there is a splitting of this. Representation. And you can also see it immediately if you expand 
uh, what <clears throat> what we heard in the talk of Lee. I mean, if you take the uh, if you take uh, the modularity series and expand this cusp form, then the growth of the parameters is actually almost there's no growth. So in the in the parameter of the modular form that's associated to this curve, there's no growth. So that's another way to detect it. Very well. But the, but the thing is, is really that that you get uh, the splitting of the character, so you basically get two directly L functions or something. You get something uh, similar than the than the L function, the hexa function of the of the elliptic curve. That would, and of course, the big question, one of the questions, is what is the modularity theorem that say for one parameter Calabiao? And we, I mean, people believe it's uh, somehow sort of uh, that all Calabiao instead of the uh, and a form of uh, a given level gamma not m should actually uh, have a, a para model uh, of, of so. so that would be the, uh, the other but yes yes that is also true you can also see it on the j function relation Okay, so let's come to the maybe. So does it mean that you put string theory on a for sale? If you put string theory on a for sale with some, is that always going to be at an attractive point then? Um, okay. Say, I will say this is an obvious special. Yeah, maybe yes, maybe there's an addition. <clears throat> okay, so then I come uh, to this to the real topic. So this is the topic of the previous research. And uh, so remember that we had uh, that I said maybe the B model always wins. So I want to make it on Z. And then I want to write it as, uh, as a generated series 2G minus 2 FZ. And now I want to make, uh, uh, I want to make uh, an expansion in the string coupling. So I want to say what is. What are the properties of resurgence with respect to the string coupling? So, in a genus expansion. So, so the first observation is um, there's an observation and the observation would be that um, if you if you take um, F, let's say N I, I call it, I, I, you see the index is somehow uh, here. So I, I do it like this. Um, so that is, if you go at any point in the modelized space, then this uh, behaves like, um, this behaves like A minus M in factorial. And that is called Gibbray uh, one property. property. And uh, and this is sort of saying the basis for the fact that you can do Borel transformation and so on. So that that's that's a, uh, that is a well established. Um, um, uh, let, let's give an example. So y is true. E.g. Uh, set is this mum point set mum. Um, so in the set mum point, all the uh, the instant of corrections are suppressed. And you basically, uh, the only contribution comes from the constant map. So, so then uh, uh, you get a set mum is basically, you can calculate that is for any kind of your true, is 2G2 times P of M or the number. And that is actually, uh, that is actually done with this relation to 2D gravity because now you map to a point 
and the uh, and the uh, um, part of the of the integral that I had that uh, says where this point is basically becomes the Euler class of the Calabria. That's why you get the Euler number of the Calabria. Yes. Okay. N over two. Is it always the same A? Um, yeah. So in this simple, you should put an universal A here. Yeah. So uh, so then uh, so that you can also uh, we also know that at the conifold um, that con so then it's actually um, also related to two D gravity and it gets uh, two D uh, factorial and then I know what the T A is is a two D vanishing period at the con. So that's also very nice. So here I know what it is. So that's uh, that is um, maybe Moshal and Bob. A non point is a point where it's maximum unicode and monodromy, and uh, it's the same than the cusp point for the elliptical. So basically, it's um, it's the it's the point where you uh, can compare the A and the B model. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so 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 basically, um, the so now I, I want to uh, so this is these are the, the observation and now how you solve it solution. Uh, in the B model, I said this very roughly, but I need it a little bit more specific now. So, <clears throat> of course, the the central thing is the holomorphic anomaly equation of the zero B. Um, and this holomorphic uh, anomaly equation tells you that there is a recursive relation. So, um, it tells you that this FG. Uh, is actually not quite holomorphic. I mean, for instance, F0 is holomorphic, mm -hmm. but the higher FDs are non holomorphic. Basically, non holomorphic. Mm -hmm. And there is a recursion that goes like this. So it's one over uh, C uh, I I J, and then you get uh, E I F D uh, minus one. And then you get a uh, sum. Uh, of uh, h runs from one to g minus one, and then you get uh, d uh, i f h d j h d minus h. So this is a this is a this is a recursive equation for the FGs, and uh, we can calculate f zero by the periods. Uh, and we can also calculate this constant by the periods. Uh, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> C I J by the periods, and also F one by the periods. So uh, this is racing at version of the extension. So it starts uh, good. <laughs> I can start with this uh, data, but you realize immediately that um, that it has um, that it has a, a kernel, and the kernel is any holomorphic function because it just says that I take the derivative to respect to the anholomorphic. So there is a kernel, and this kernel is essentially one of the progresses that um, that Sergey and Celia and Boris. Um, we are now doing this is also using modularity and <laughs> I can skip it anyway so uh, so now you have this SP, um for uh, sorry the SPH uh, H3 uh, uh, M uh, Z monodromy. Uh, 
I mean, more precisely, we have a subgroup of that, which uh, it depends on this color of Yao. Um, and this, uh, as I said, so this is why I had this, uh, this uh, so to say, this thing about this modularity of solutions to pick a box equation. It's basically, it's a very complicated theory. We don't, we can go, and we cannot go to the NFDB and find such a function, but we can construct it on the pick-up box equation. And, and these are examples, these FGs. So basically the FGs, you know, the FGs are uh, non-holomorphic. Um, modular, or let's say automorphic uh, forms. Under this, and that of course restricts them very much. So we have this information, and we have this information, <clears throat> and um, and you know that if you have a physical amplitude, and you know it's for instance uh, has to be invariant under uh, SL two Z, it's often not enough because uh, you maybe know the weight, but then the weight, uh, the space of the form of the given weights is maybe uh, has some dimension, so you need some boundary. <laughs> And so you need that one, and you need uh, boundary conditions. Conditions uh, to fix the kernel. Which is called the holomorphic ambiguity. <laughs> and the the outcome is um, the outcome is that this uh, this FG is a polynomial. I mean, I could have said here and other indicators. You can actually uh, you can actually write this as Feynman graph. So so there's also the Feynman graph for the FG. There's an auxiliary action, and then it would and it that is because they would all contribute equally, they would also go like one uh, two G over two. And in a sense, what people do with this holomorphic anomaly is exactly the same that the people try to do with prime, because they realize that uh, maybe also the prime and graphs uh, are all automorphic forms of a certain sort, and you have just to add them at the certain at the at the loop order, and it will not grow. Factorial, but it will grow polynomial. Because if you have and you have a third weight, then maybe it grows a bit more. I mean, this is sort of say a long-term dream, but it it goes in a little bit. Yeah. The graph somehow picks out the field modularity of degree H three. Yeah. So here, this is H three. Is the single? This is the single modular form or something right. of this uh, of this. But how is this Hmm? Well, because the monodromy was I mean, all monodromies on the Calabiao. So if you take the sigma, it would be, uh, and then this is this, uh, this is the FP form. And then if you have a monodromy, then uh, M P sigma M is sigma. So it is like what we want to If you look, if you look at the monotones of the Lagrange curve, then you will find exactly the same. I mean, it's not the full SL2Z, but it's a subgroup. It's Yeah, I have to, uh, to admit that uh, I don't know how to do this because the, I, I mean, I can't. Uh, people like. Right? Uh, but uh, but still, it's very hard to find the sky because uh, under the subgroup, nothing is known. So, so, so that's why I'm saying that that's why I made this point with this uh, with this uh, theta, stupid theta three that uh, even so you don't know, uh, but the Picker Fuchs equation will give it to you in a sense. <clears throat> so the so the up. Uh, So the upshot is that uh, this um, now 
is a weighted polynomial, and this has a weight one, weight two, weight three, weight zero, and that's the problem because this is polymorphic, so and it's modular invariant, so it has no weight. This is like adding the half module to in the game, and that will that you have to fix by boundary condition. There's no way. <clears throat> uh, but the but the whole thing has 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 a has simply a weight, and um, and this weight uh, is um, is something like three uh, g. 3g minus 3. So it's a very simple. We have to write down all polynomials up to this. And then you have to fix this one, uh, as I said. But the, but the, uh, <clears throat> I didn't explain this one. Uh, so, so uh, this di, I mean, let's make an analogy because I cannot explain so much. So an analogy would be take e4, e6. Uh, and E2 hat. So E2 hat, you know, uh, this is also um, done in the way that Hannah explained. You take the orbit uh, of, of T and then you sum it up. And But this doesn't converge. But you can make it either converging uh, by a, a, a mean trick, then it's the guy without the hat, or you can add in of tau. And that's, so to say, the first example of a mock model platform this uh, shadow, constant shadow. And 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 this is the one uh, the guy I mean. And now what is so? Imagine we have this one, and now I want to have a, a modular form of a certain weight. I just add them, uh, but then I don't know uh, essentially how. I mean, then then this has the this has a certain dimension display. So I need uh, so many uh, bounding conditions to fix the dimension. And the and the. Um, so the idea is um, the idea is then then that this EI is is like the master. So if you this is like the master. Uh, so that is like uh, this uh, nice relation that is attributed to Ramanujan that this gives one over uh, well. So e two f plus e four. So normally, if you take the derivative, you don't end up with the modular form. But if you take the mass modular derivative, you take this uh, almost holomorphic modular between this close. And so it is here. So now I come to the uh, boundary conditions. And there's basically. Um, so I can stop in 20 minutes. Yeah. Boundary conditions is basically conifold gap. Uh, gap. Uh, up to normal bound. Bound. And uh, then U is, uh, is, the, is taking uh, D4. D2, D0 grain index, and have wall crossing. And you get some of the D6, D2, D0 grains predicted. And it's this, so say you need a Donaldson and Thomas invariant to really do the wall crossing. But this gives new boundary conditions. And since we can fix this now, and since uh, so here, yeah, I think she got the right of pricing for this one. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, she understands how this wall crossing, you can get more boundary conditions. So that's, uh, that's this. And I realized I have to skip many things. <clears throat> so, so, the, so the upshot of this uh, whole thing is, okay, we can do it. So we can do it to very high order. And now we can uh, start with our, um, with our, uh, research and structure. <laughs> the conifold gap basically means that at the conifold there is by Strominger is just this mass. Uh, so basically, there's one BPS state coming down, and if you uh, put it in in the Gopakumawafa formula, then you get actually a gap. And the gap says it starts. This, I mean, the gap is the gap. Yes. Is let's say TC is this, uh, there is some vanishing period in the conifold, there is a constant period, and then 
uh, it says that we have G, we have, we even don't uh, know the two, I mean, there's some, uh, some value numbers, some factors, and then it starts with TC 2G minus 2, and then the next term is actually order TC 0, and that's it. Yeah. They are all zero, and that gives a lot of So, I mean, maybe I should, since I'm not uh, finishing maybe this talk in style, maybe I should say, okay, so what are the questions? The question is, um, I mean, if you have a give free one series, then you can apply a machinery. This machinery was developed by uh, Ecal recently uh, very uh, much, and it's, it's called a resurgent structure. And by this resurgent structure, you can eventually figure out by the uh, by the singularities in the Borel plane what are the subtle points to a putative action that we don't have. Maybe it's Kodawa Spencer, but we don't know. So we be, we basically we basically do it. We sort of, uh, in particular, Marcos is a great specialist on this subject, uh, and um, and uh, <clears throat> so so let me. Uh, start the next, uh, the last thing, which is, of course, uh, for well summation and iteration structure. And of course, we want to do it for obscure uh, non compact, but we are. Okay, so if you have any of this Gibbery series, so you have a series, let's say, um, um, <clears throat> like n equals zero and n equal n z n, and that it has this Gibbery one. Then, <clears throat> I mean, well, I, you know, that every series of physics is given to you like this. I mean, for instance, and, and for good reason. So for instance, if you calculate the magnetic moment of the electron, you have a series which is given in this uh, term. In this case, Z is E squared. And as was observed by Wilson, it would be very bad if this guy converges because then you can analytically continue to an unstable series and you don't know why. So, so, so they must be asymptotic. So this is, this is an asymptotic series. You have the uh, optimal truncation. So these are just things that one has in the back of the mind. So, and then you simply make something fairly stupid. You get rid of the uh, of the exponential uh, growth. So uh, remember that this went with n factorial a to the minus n. So you divide this guy uh, by n factorial and you get a new series. And then if you, well, now, now this series has a chance of converging. Uh, I mean, it does converge. Uh, I mean, converges. But with um, <clears throat> branch singularities, with singularities, and it's a, it's a so important set that you call this uh, branch singularities omega and you put them in the set. This set determines all the properties of the, of the rest of the theory. So this is a set. <laughs> and now you um, you go, I mean, actually the curve singularity of 
like this. So this index that is that. And now you go and um, expand it around this set, about this uh, uh, the, this uh, graph singularity, and it turns out to be a, a, a log singularity. So you get a Stokes constant, which depends on this omega over the pi, and then you get a log of sigma. This is the sigma which perturbs from here. And then you get a new series, um, which uh, is properly also, and then you get regular P. Now, if you want to go back from here to here, then you have to uh, make a directional Laplace construct. So here you, uh, you need a uh, direction. Last form. Last. At the nearest uh, of this uh, sigma v in the Borel's way uh, to zero in the Borel's way. So sigma is uh, is uh, is a parameter of this Borel plane, and maybe it's good to write down this uh, Laplace transform. So, so this Laplace transform would be um, L it depends on W phi, and it's something like one over Z. Um, and then the directional is expressed in this uh, in this angle theta, and uh, you get uh, here e just the normal Laplace transform along this ray uh, of phi of z. And you realize, of course, uh, that this reestablishes this this, uh, this uh, I mean, it, it basically reestablishes this. Uh, I mean, multiplies with this n this one. So n factor. So that so that. Gives it, gives it back this function, but of course there can be many planes and uh, many uh, uh, um, singularities in the book. So if, 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 I mean the simple situation is the zero, and you have here is your sigma w, and then you take the uncle contour, and you go. Uh, basically, uh, you you pick a branch of this and go back, and then this is so to say here expressed by this theta. So maybe it's a this is theta plus, this is theta minus. Maybe I'm going to theta plus, and then I get a, a function there. <clears throat> so um, so now the point is that you get a new new function here, and this new I mean first of all yeah, I get and you get a new function, which is also asymptotic. asymptotic. And uh, you can do this uh, now again and again, and you get what is called what uh, what Ekal calls a resurgent structure. So you basically. A lot of these uh, fees So the idea of the theory is to um, is a very complicated idea. Uh, you have to look at all the singularities of the Borel plane, look at all the trans series uh, trans series series, and get this resurgent structure. And the claim is that will help uh, that will give you uh, gives you some information about the global nature of the function you start. So. Um, <clears throat> There is so 
So there is something which is called the return factor. And, um, and that is, um, is basically, you start with your phi, which you know called phi naught, and then uh, maybe uh, you find two interesting, uh, two interesting singularities in the red plane, you get two new things, and then uh, you can, I mean, the idea is essentially that, that, um, uh, that, at all level, you can get uh, these things, and there are many relations of them. And the idea is, is if you know any of these asymptotic series, you can construct a whole picture. So any uh, pi uh, n r contain contain all the the non perturbative And the um, the um, the other uh, so so this is the, the first statement. The second statement is that uh, these um, these uh, singularities that you discover the singularities in the Borel planes, which are now many planes, correspond to subtle points in the putative head. And there's also a, a disclaimer. Uh, I mean, while this is true, uh, we maybe not get off. Not get off. But the idea, I mean, maybe uh, you know the idea, but so again, try to make it in the last uh, couple of minutes, uh, or let's say just now, a simple example. So, for example, you doesn't mean that, for example, you know, by more. You can restore five Yes, you can. So you can restore all of that. Yes. yes. That's 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 the idea. Everything contains uh, somehow all information. You just have to go with three uh, back with uh, inverse directional Laplace transform. <clears throat> and of course, uh, there also is the idea that at some point maybe it stops, but <laughs> this is this is also a good question. But, but for instance, I will give you an example where it does stop. So you know, for instance, a e z. I mean, this is the array function. That is um, the case where everybody learns that. So it's e to the um, uh, dt, and then you have z t and the cubic term, and then you have uh, the special points that are plus minus i. And they half, so these are the subtles. And then you would get from each of the subtles, you would get uh, you would get uh, an, an, an asymptotic expansion. And you would uh, get the two, uh, you only get uh, the, uh, these two things, and you're stopped in there, and then you can actually reconstruct the <coughs> Yeah. Let's say you have another expect about one subtle in principle, another expect about everything. That's right. Yeah. And the um and it, and once uh yeah, so so uh so if you know the expansion around one cell, you can reconstruct the, the original pie or the other. And can I get the exact sign? Uh no, <laughs> this is like is like uh, you can get better and better approximation by taking uh, into account the subtle with the right weights. I mean, I mean, this is how Mathematica implements the area. Uh, so, so you can get arbitrarily good, but you, you don't get. It. <clears throat> but, uh, you don't know the Stokes. Constant. Yeah, I mean, let, let me now uh, come to the Stokes constant. Um, so. Um, so as we uh, already uh, said that, um, and so that, so let me talk a little bit about the Stokes constant because there is something interesting 
string here. So it turns out that if you do this, I mean, uh, if you do this for the probability string, you have to uh, imagine you can do it now for any point in the complex. And any point will have a new Borel thing. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> but the Stokes constants, for instance, near the MUM point uh, turn out to be, I mean, in general, all the Stokes constants we found are integer, and some of the Stokes constants we found are related to DPM. So that's maybe uh, the main, the key message of this uh, second part of my talk. Um, Sorry, when you say that, yeah, we, we basically focused on uh, all the hypergeometric color Biao. I mean, these are 14 examples. And in this case, um, I mean, they are, for instance, on my web page, thanks to uh, the work of, uh, I mean, we basically calculate now, for instance, the Quintic was possible with the gap and the Castanova bound we know in the I think uh, late, uh, well, it was, it was early, early odds, you know, early 2000. We couldn't do it to uh, genus uh, 51, but now already with the information about D0 uh, and D, uh, D4, D0, D2, D0 brain uh, index uh, at rank one, we can already do it to 17. Uh, technically, we did, did it to uh, 64, but these things are absolutely important to check the statements that we are doing. Uh, to make the Stokes constants uh, calculate them precisely, to find the, the uh, resurgence structure and so on. So this is a big progress from my point of view. I don't know. <laughs> Other people might not be doing this, but, uh, but this is a huge data set now where this is all... I mean, the computers have become so good that you can actually do it. I didn't know that. So you can calculate um, I mean, I think the, the, the record is the X, uh, X, uh, X8, uh, where you can go to genus 90 with this one, one. But if we uh, take into account higher rank, which means for the index that you get more modular forms, then you can get even higher. So I think you're going to collaborate with people. Yeah. It's average. So, let me use the one minute to just write two summary points. I mean, so so we used the uh, non-perturbative version of the of the polymorphic anomaly equation. Uh, which actually is not our idea, it's an idea from uh, Caruso and um, people from, from this one, which are not here, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, this uh, maybe the references. Um, this is the reference. This. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, here it is. So it's Maria, Edelstein, yeah, I was. So this a uh, uh, to analyze the research structure. And then uh, we find that this uh, A that I mentioned, this uh, this A is is the a period uh, in H two uh, H two uh, sorry for H three uh, W is the mirror so to speak of that. I mean it's in Z uh, maybe that is point that's something and then uh, the third point is the Stokes constant Stokes constant uh, tent 
I mean, this we don't know exactly, but uh, uh, but in some cases, let's say that we check uh, so it says R DPS and R. And for instance, for uh, at infinity, if you calculate the simple Stokes constant, it turns out for the queen to be uh, the Stokes constant is something like 275 over 2. You don't know this number, it's just uh, it's just uh, this zero, uh, zero, zero zero degree one number of the quintic. This is the Stokes constant at one at the nearest similarity. So we believe that this analysis maybe gives us even some information what are the stable DPS states because they tend to uh, occur as Stokes constant in certain regions. And uh, and the other uh, thing is that uh, what I cannot do is there is extensive computer evidence for all these things in particular for this use of the non-perturbative holomorphic normal equation uh, for this non uh, for this. Uh, Low, uh, compact cases. And also there's a very, very nice formalism. I mean, it's like a operator formalism in the large modulized space, which gives you uh, this one series, uh, series systematically. Uh, okay, then maybe I should stop. So this uh, resurgent structure, it uh, computes non-perturbative effects and non-perturbative effects are usually due to some uh, instantons. So uh, what is the space-time interpretation of this yeah, I mean, we, non-perturbative we, terms? Um, I mean, these are instantons uh, that are instantons in Kodaira space by gravity, I agree with you. And um, so these are non-trivial solutions. I mean, this, this is the interpretation that we have. And uh, and the subtle point should also subtle points uh, for the virus. But um, do they have also some brain interpretation, like maybe A B brains? Uh... Yeah, I mean the the um, the this this um, this A this constant A this is a period, right? And it's also the central charge of a brain. So in this sense, uh, yes. I mean the fact that we find it in in Z. Uh, suggests that's actually a, a BPS states of a, of a particular brain that comes for this. So it, the answer is, um, I don't know the detailed structure, but the, the evidence is that the BPS states occur in this uh, Stokes constant and in the instanton expansion. I haven't written down here a single instanton expansion. Maybe I should do this. Uh, so, uh, so when you... I mean, I, I, I basically have written down, so, so there would be the L instant on action. So this L instant on action, that is something like E to the minus L, and here comes now uh, your, your brain, and it actually goes also with the right uh, power of lambda. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's good. And then it would be, a series. I mean, this is the idea of these people, uh, and um, and then it would be like this, and lambda uh, n minus one. So this this would be the n instant on action, and the assumption of uh, of these people is that these guys fulfills the holomorphic anomaly equation, and that's actually similar. Like if I mean, another appearance of this transverse series is, of course, if you have nonlinear differential equations and and have and expand them about a point of essential the symmetry, then you also get the mass. And they, 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 the philosophy is a bit is a bit to take this uh, recursion relation as the nonlinear recursion because it's nonlinear, right? It has an f times f on the right hand side, and and uh, and then. Use the holomorphic anomaly equation like people use the, uh, the linearization of this nonlinear differential equation and construct the uh, the, uh, the trans series. And uh, as I said, I mean, if you, I mean, there are many things that that you get out, um, which which are very concrete. So, for instance, you get out immediately 
the how this how this uh, how this FG grow. I mean, this is this is a formula that we can write down. We get an asymptotic series, which is sim a little bit similar to the thing that Kana talked about. You get a, you get a, a formula for an asymptotic series with a couple of constants to fix. And once you fix this constant, you find and this is extremely good. I um, mean, if you then compare it with Richardson transform, let's say, uh, then it's extremely good. So you get also maybe I should mention that you get um, uh, asymptotic flow. Uh, do you see uh, any evidence for the uh, exponential effects which go like exponential one over lambda squared? No, that's a, that is first you would uh, like to see that like gs squared, but it uh, is not here uh, because. Uh, I'm asking because uh, there is this observation, but also because you have this observation that Stokes constants are BS uh, indices, and we know that they go uh, that uh, they have uh, exponential growth, like exponential charge squared, yeah, and uh, therefore they, you can have diver divergence if you sum over charges, yeah, right. And uh, you probably know there is this old work of uh, Van Doren and Pulin where they showed that uh, you do generalized uh, Laplace uh, Borel resummation of this guy, you get precisely this uh, NS5 brain like uh, instantons. Right. I mean, that is something that uh, that you could look at with the new data. You could also look uh, with the new data at the spinning factor. We haven't done this, but I think there was a uh, So there are. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that I have uh, not uh, maybe uh, done my homework to prepare very well uh, to connect it uh, uh, with the black hole story, but there's a lot of things that you could do. That, 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 um, <clears throat> I mean, we also, in, the, in this paper with Tampawa, we checked the OSV conjecture, I mean, this three one half row, you can do this, this thing, and now it's a better way and so on. I haven't done it. So it's, uh, Any other questions? So, uh, three actually. So, uh, you had the stable BPS states. Uh, stability condition is which one here? No, I mean, here we, we just say that this one at infinity are stable. This is uh, this D, D2, D, I mean, one D6, D2, D0. Uh, so, they are stable in this region. Our conjecture is if you do this now faster, <laughs> And then we would uh, either find the Stokes constant with this uh, with this uh, <clears throat> that corresponds to the to the stable state in this region or not. But here, it will say is true. Do it at my point. This is stable. And so you, the, the bound conditions you put were the, all the conical gap and the cathode level bound. Yeah. Let's say, for example, I have a torical labial with alternate block transitions. Well, toric can be always no problem because the uh, conic fold is always uh, enough, and also you can use the vertical or any other vice of the to actually solve this. But even with but it has no gravity in it, so it's not so interesting. Okay, but even with the flops, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can uh, you can uh, you can uh, do this uh, by this. Uh, I mean, there are this uh, uh, formulas by Ruan for the. I mean, this perfect resolution formulas for the for this that you can do it. I mean, I would say all local Calabiaos, uh, the toric ones are anyway solved, but even the ones which are non toric and maybe related by a toric are solved. And finally, like, connecting to what Candelas and Senia have been Can you say something about the bullet for a It's not It's not quite hyper geometric. No, this is the AS set. Uh, AS set. Uh, 34, and this is non hypergeometric, and uh, I believe it has some attractive points by something which is Q over, uh, I mean, there's an expansion of square root of 11, right? And, um, and there are uh, attractive points, but uh, with the, in the work with Sadi and, uh, uh, and Pyramid, um, we find and try to say. So, yeah. We found actually um, in uh, in the 
X33 and in the X64, uh, which are hypergeometric, also attractive points, which uh, have no extension. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, this, uh, this is where it's also very interesting because in many cases, you can say there is, like for the, uh, for the elliptic curve, there is a, is a reason by its bibliotry. But uh, you go and, uh, and we start very, very much at this example, you don't see its symmetry. At this point, I mean, the point is somewhere else. I think it's here. I mean, this attractor point really over, I don't know, some three, some two, or something. But absolutely no symmetry for this value. Sorry. So it's it's super strange. Without uh, doing the Hasselhoff setup, you would never see it. 